Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn and this is Doom Eternal. This is a tips and tricks video to talk to you about various different aspects of the game. If you're just starting out then you might find some of this useful. I'm going to start with combat. Now combat is quite fast paced and very hectic so the key is to keep moving constantly, shooting, jumping and dashing. You'll unlock a dash ability quite early on in the game that basically allows you to shoot across the map and you need to focus on glory kills so getting those glory kills in when you get up close and do a finishing maneuver on the demons gives you loads of extra health and ammo that's pretty essential to carry on bashing and crashing your way through the map. Now to get those glory kills you need to put the demons into a down state where they're flashing blue or amber like that and you can then press the melee button to finish them off. They'll then spill a load of ammo and health on the floor and you can pick that up and carry on. You'll find there is ammo and health scattered around the map as you're going but it's quite limited and you'll soon find you quickly run low. You do have a chainsaw quite early on in the game that you can use to attack enemies but you can't use it on the bigger demons unless they're already injured so it's quite tricky. Another thing to do is to also be aware of your surroundings because here I just landed in some lava which is not ideal while trying to jump away from enemies. So keep moving constantly, bouncing and jumping your way around the map and shooting as you go. If you stand still for too long you will die and it's worth just getting up and smashing the smaller baddies as soon as you can, injuring them nicely. You can use a chainsaw on the little ones as well, so the imps, the possessed soldiers and things like that, you can use a chainsaw on them and that's another good way of getting ammo and then carrying on going and it's a very effective way of doing it. And also once you get a bit further in you can unlock some things that I'll show you a bit later on that you can use to then make the ability to do those glory kills a bit easier. Next on to weapons. Now there are a number of different weapons in the game, some of which you'll already be familiar with if you've already played Doom. That includes combat shotgun, super shotgun, plasma rifle, all sorts. These each have two mods that can be unlocked via these little bots that you'll find scattered around the world and you can unlock both those mods and then you can upgrade them and you can upgrade them with points that I'll show you in a minute and you earn those points by completing challenges, getting kills throughout the map and generally making your way through the game. So they're quite easy to earn and then you get those points and you can upgrade each of the weapons. The weapons themselves are just found in the game. You'll either find them on the mothership or you'll find them scattered around the maps and you'll pick them up and then you'll see each of them has a mod that you can then unlock. And those mods are very useful. They change the play style and they are very effective. But it's also worth knowing and paying attention to the tips that come along. So for example, certain weapons are useful against certain enemies. You'll find, for example, that the plasma rifle is effective against enemies that have energy shields. So you'll find uh, about halfway through the game you'll find possessed soldiers coming along with energy shields out that you need to shoot. You can either use grenades to explode them or you can use the plasma rifle to damage them. You also find bigger baddies that have energy force fields on that need to be dealt with first before you can deal them damage. So it's worth paying attention to that. You'll also see that the cannon has a precision scope on it that you can use to snipe off bits of weaponry and armor which is pretty cool. So you can see here going into the point system when you go into your arsenal loadout you can see in the top right there's a skull and a yellow symbol that shows you how many points you have and you can upgrade go through the upgrade chain here so you have to get all of the upgrades and then you can get a mastery level which is the most impressive bit. See the heavy cannon here, I've got micro missiles unlocked and then you can upgrade that. And there's three different upgrades you can get before you need to get to the top level of mastery. So you have to unlock those and then you have to complete a challenge. It's worth unlocking mods for each of them and upgrades for each of them as well because as I said, you will run low on ammo and you'll find you're switching weapons really regularly so you don't want to upgrade one weapon and try to stick to that because you'll soon find that you haven't got any ammo for it so it's best to sort of spread out your perk points and your mods as much as you can uh, you'll also find that the more powerful weapons like the plasma rifle for example run out quicker than the weaker weapons like the shotgun or something so you do have to strike a good balance there and make sure you get in loads of glory kills so you can just keep replenishing that ammo as well and once you get a bit further in you can then chain the glory kills together and just keep your ammo coming 
Weapon points can be earned naturally by completing mission challenges and combat challenges and you can earn up to 10 weapon points per level as well which is quite a lot so you can then upgrade your weapons and make life easier for killing those demons which is pretty awesome. You can also complete a number of other challenges within the game as well. There are secret encounters, for example, Slayer Gates, and those are sort of mini uh, little demon battles that you have to complete in a set period of time that will also help you get more weapon unlocks and progress your demonic corruption meter. So there's all sorts of different unlocks and upgrades that you can do when you're playing through and it really keeps the things interesting so it's worth paying attention to the different challenges in the menu system and for each level as you work your way through and keep an eye out for secrets and I'll go into uh, secrets in a bit more in a minute now you can see quite a few different guns unlocked here and I'm also working my way through the upgrades and it's worth paying attention to what you're upgrading because as I said it can be useful for different situations. The combat shotgun for example has a grenade launcher as one of it, so a full auto shotgun as another. The cannon is also useful if you put the scope on it because you can then shoot the arms off the mancubus and shoot the rocket launchers off some other demons as well. So pay attention to the tips that pop up in the game because those give you important hints but you'll also notice bits of enemies glow. Now we talk about suit coins. Suit coins is another upgrade that you can get. You'll find them scattered around the map and I'll also show you another minute in a minute another place you can get them but you'll find one here for example just tucked away here. You'll see these like ghosts holding onto them and these coins that you collect and then you can unlock bits of your suit and then that upgrades your abilities so you'll find them all over the place and you can also find them in your ship and inside the menu system you'll see there's a suit upgrade here and then you have various different skills that you can upgrade and I'd highly recommend doing the grappler ones for faster ledge grabbing and also improve your dash kills because you want to be able to get those glory kills really easily too. Now as I said on your ship so this is a big ship that you go back to every time you complete a mission and you get given a new one. If you explore around a bit you'll find there are various places where you can unlock extra points and little upgrades for your abilities and it is worth looking about. Now you have to collect batteries that are scattered around the game and you'll find these pretty easily but you'll find some batteries and you need those batteries to take them back to the ship and then you plug them in to the doors on these rooms that are otherwise locked and you can explore various different levels and you'll find them all over the place on the ship so it's worth just having a poke about and then if you look through you'll see like a little force field window that's stopping you from getting in there and you need uh, two batteries for each of these doorways so it's quite a lot and you be careful what you do as well because I'll show you in a minute I made a mistake and wasted a couple of batteries on something I don't really need so you can plug these ones in and then you can unlock that door and get access to it here so two batteries gets me another suit point so I can upgrade my suit and improve that but you'll find there's one opposite here for example and they're on various different levels and there are also upgrades in terms of mods for your weapons and other bits as well that I'll show you a bit later on so there are various areas so pay attention to how many of these sentinel batteries you have and make use of them just bear in mind that you need two to unlock each of the doors so you need to save them and pay attention to what you're unlocking as well. One of the mistakes I did make was I went to one area of the ship and it looked like there was going to be something cool up here and I actually wasted it earlier on but don't be like me don't do this I only had three batteries and I used two of them to open this at the gate here which essentially just gives you access to a new skin for your character which is probably fun later on it looked like it was going to be some awesome armor I thought maybe it would give me an armor upgrade or something but it doesn't it just upgrades the look and feel of your suit which is not particularly exciting so don't be like me don't waste batteries early on but you can see it's a custom skin for your slayer and uh, then visual upgrade essentially but you can see that they're all on different levels uh, so look down you can also go up and down stairs but you can jump down quickly and easily you see one there is a weapon mod and you can grab that with ease so that's another way to get it you usually find the weapon mods in the levels themselves sometimes tucked away 
and but you can also get them on the ship so that's pretty cool too the other upgrade type is runes now runes can be found scattered around the map and they enhance or enable new abilities so you can see you can do things like perform glory kills faster from further away get a speed boost after doing a glory kill it's very much all about the glory kills and basically encouraging you to do them and chain them together and do them as quickly as possible and obviously as i said they're very important to use anyway because they give you that ammo boost and they let you to carry on getting kills easy. I would recommend getting this one, the one that increases how long the enemies are in that down or staggered state because that means you can get those glory kills a lot more easily. If you're in the middle of a really hectic battle and you manage to put someone in a stagger state but then you're surrounded by other enemies that you need to deal with, the ability to then be able to dash over to deal with them is really handy so that's one I'd recommend getting so you can only use three at one time fully activated but you can unlock more than that so you can choose at a later date to then swap out for a different one if you want to change a playstyle up, which is pretty cool. The next sort of upgrade is Sentinel Crystals. Now, Sentinel Crystals, again, you'll find scattered around the map as secrets and on your ship as well. These can be chained together when you spend the crystals and purchase different upgrades. You'll see you can get armor, health, and ammo upgrades. And if you buy one from each side, you then get the focus on that, and then you're boosting your overall health, armor, and ammo. And obviously ammo is very important, so is health and armor can make a big difference too. Quick note here as well, by the way, when you get the fire belcher that fires a little bit of flame from the shoulder, you press R on PC to activate that. You set enemies on fire, you can then shoot them and then you can they'll drop some armor, so you can pick up armor. So that's a quick way of getting armor if you haven't found it scattered around the map, which is pretty useful. But here you can see you can unlock different abilities for each of these sections and they then also give you either ammo, armor or health boosts and improve it overall so there's loads of different variations of unlocks that you can get to change your abilities and your skills in various ways and make you a better demon slayer now on to one of the most frustrating things about doom eternal at least for me and that is the issue with jumping the frustration of jumping i've had a lot of issues with it with it added this platform mechanic in and it, you'll be pretty familiar with it if you've played any other game basically climbing up walls and parkouring your way across the map you need to watch out for these sort of textured walls and areas where you can grab onto it so luckily when you're jumping through the air you press E uh, whatever the use button is on console if you're playing on console and that'll grab hold of the edge of it and then you'll be able to carry on jumping you can double jump and you can also use the dash ability to then jump through the air and get the distance but there's different sorts of things that you can jump and hold on to so you've got these floating demonic tablet things that you can dash over to and grab onto but i often find that you haven't quite gotten far enough and then you'll dash to try and get closer and then you end up falling to your death and I died a lot of times just trying to get between these so you do need to practice how you're jumping and dashing but it's worth getting the upgrade as soon as you can to be able to dash further so you can get it so you can dash twice uh, if you can get that then you can dash twice across even in midair to be able to then get further you do have to look around a lot to try and work out where you're going to go sometimes it's not obvious where it is but it can be useful to have a good look around first before you start jumping jumping is also useful for finding secrets so show off some of the secret areas and uh, sometimes you'll see them through a wall and you'll know where they are and then you just have to try and work it out based on the environment so here i found one by jumping on top of a lorry and that takes you to a wall here that's broken and you can then smash your way into that wall so if you see any walls like that that have sort of cracks in them just press your melee button and then that'll smash it down and you can get access to the secrets and there are all sorts of secrets scattered around some of them are really obvious like this one was just in plain open and you'll unlock little toys for your ship and various other things you'll get sentinel crystals and weapon unlocks and all sorts of other things then cheat codes as well sometimes you'll just fall down a hole and you'll find a secret other times you have to actually make your way around try and figure out where it's going to be and they can be a bit of a pain but obviously getting all the secrets completing all the challenges doing things like the slayer gates 
and the other challenges on the map that unlocks the most amount of points that then allows you to unlock weapon points and to upgrade everything and to progress through the game so it's worth paying attention to the environment and trying to work out where you can get into these secrets and obviously if they're giving you weapon boosts and things like that too then it's a double bonus because you get a lot of extra abilities to then carry on and improve in your game. It is also worth noting that one of the interesting things about Doom Eternal is that there's no penalisation for changing the difficulty. So you can change the difficulty settings in the game. If you're finding it too hard, you can drop the difficulty down and you won't actually lose out for it. And also the things that you've unlocked will stay there even if you up the difficulty. So if you feel like you unlock loads of stuff, then you can turn the difficulty up a bit, make it a bit more difficult, but you'll still have all the different unlocks, which is pretty cool and a, a nice addition to the game. Hope you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, or hilarious. Be sure to subscribe and check out these other videos, as well as taking a look in the description for links and information you might find useful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or anything you'd like to see extra about this. And have a great life.